Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Pooh and welcome to day 299 of A Year of Change. Uh, today I want to talk about something that has sort of popped up on my radar. Um, it's, well, not really radar, it's in the news, which I've been looking for, I've actively been looking for. Um, there were a number of different things that I was going to talk about this week. Um, there was a thing about black pudding being put on um, this list as a superfood, which everyone kind of went, that's bullshit. If you've ever had black pudding before, it's essentially... It, well, it's made, it's pig's blood, pork fat, and oatmeal. That's pretty much it. So, of course, someone decided, oh, we're, we're going to sort of tout this as the new superfood for the year. Um, and pretty much across the board, any health expert, every dietitian, they've all just gone, no, that's stupid. It's essentially a sausage that is 20% fat and a shit ton of sodium. It's, it's good. It's just it's very, very bad for you. It's like sausage, saying sausage is a superfood. So they sort of nipped that in the bud the same day that it came out, and everyone's now going rrr, 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 to the people that decide, oh, well, we're going to put this in as a superfood. We've learned over the course of the past few months to avoid those superfood terms. As soon as you hear that, like everyone's, oh, kale is a superfood. No, it's not. Pretty much the same as spinach and lettuce and all the other shit. It's nothing spectacular. Um, so as soon as I hear that now, it's usually, mm, no, it's not. Anyway, the thing that really sort of stuck out uh, today was, um, or yesterday, I should say, um, that, now, I know when I first started running, um, it's it was difficult to sort of get going. And so there were stops and starts, and I started really, really slowly, and it's been over a period of months that I've been gradually building up to where I am today. And the same thing with what we're doing with exercise is that we're trying to introduce it again into our lives and getting to a point when it's, be when it's become, this, when it becomes sort of a regular routine. And what I found is that as you progress, once, once you have it to a point where you're doing it, you know, every day or every few days or whatever it is, there is something mentally that happens that sort of helps you along with the eating as well. That I don't think if I was doing as the exercise that I was doing, I think that um, aside from the weight that I've lost probably from doing exercise, uh, which I think is probably minimal, I think I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have lost as much. Um, if I wasn't doing the exercise, not necessarily because of just the physical exertion, but because of the mindset, because I'd still be sort of stuck in that, you know, I don't want to go anywhere, don't want to move, don't want to do anything. I'm just going to put on PJs and not wear pants and sit at home all day and do nothing. Um, and I still get those feelings from time to time. I still do it from time to time. And it feels great just to, there's a good, I just realized this could potentially start turning into something weird. I don't mean just being without pants feel Although being without pants is pretty damn good. No one likes wearing pants. But just having those days where you don't have to go anywhere and you just sit around in your grubbies all day and you don't do anything, they still feel great. Anyway, um, I do know that um, because of the exercise that I'm doing, when I have those moments where just oh, I really want chips or I really want cake or something like that, then because I'm doing the regular exercise, I think, you know what, I it's going to undo like an hour's worth of exercise that I've done, and I kind of don't want to do that. So it gives you that little bit of a boost to sort of keep going the way that you're going. And what I saw yesterday, there was a, a news story that sort of came out. There is, I will preface this by saying this is not an endorsement. This, well, it's kind of an endorsement. I'm going to say it's an endorsement. Um, but I'm not getting paid for this. This is the first I've heard of it. I'm not I'm in contact with any of these people, so just so that you know. But there is, um, there's a fitness club. I guess probably the best way to put it, a gym, a national gym across Canada called The Running Room. And basically what they do, they just sort of start people off. What I've been doing, and I presume anyway, don't know a lot about them, but they're, I mean, we have one here um, in the city that I live in, and it's just wall-to-wall -wall treadmills. That's pretty much all they do. I, I think it's sort of one of those things where they don't have a lot of weights and everything else. It's designed primarily for that. They're starting a new program in uh, April of next year, of this year. This is 2016. It's April of this year, so they're starting a program the next three months called Run to Quit. And what it is, it's a 10-week course um, designed to sort of get people started in running, which I understand, well, we'll get to the cynical part in a bit, it's to get people to start running, um, but at the same time, quit smoking. It's designed for smokers to get them off the cigarettes and get them started to, or get them start running. So... Um, I've gone up, I've taken a look at some of the stuff that they have available, and it's it's fairly cheap. It's like six or seven bucks a week to do it. It's, I think, $70 for the full 10 weeks, and 
they start out, you'll get, it, they basically say, if you can run gently for one minute right now, that's sort of the starting point. If you can't, they don't recommend that you do this. It's not quite ready for you yet. Um, so they would say, you know, do an introductory course and all the other stuff. Um, but if you can run gently, for like a, a soft, light, what are we thinking, slow jog for one minute, then that's where they start. And over the course of 10 weeks, they get it so that at the end of it, you can do a 5K. Maybe not run the entire thing, but you'll be able to walk a 5K. So part of that um, is, the, you know, I mean, obviously they want to get customers in and start getting people running and things like that, but they're doing this in, um, what's the word? I don't want to say in cahoots, <laughs> in conjunction. There we are. <laughs> they're doing this in conjunction with the Canadian Cancer Society, um, which I think is, you know, a very good group to get involved with. Um, and what they're trying to do is to get people that are already smoking um, to sort of introduce this in their lives so that it will, some, in a way, replace the smoking. Um, and now, so we'll go through the good stuff first. So number one, they have looked at this. They did a pilot project a little while ago, and they said that there's around 28% of people that participate stop smoking. At the end of the 10 weeks, they don't smoke anymore. Um, I don't know how far it's gone where they've said, you know, and they're still not smoking, but let's face it, once you are, like, once you're done smoking for probably, I'd say at least a full month, then you're over the rough part. So chances are it's pretty good. They say it's around 7% or seven times higher than people that quit cold turkey. I know this is kind of weird compared, the, considering what we're doing, that I'm talking about smoking. It will make sense in the long run. Trust me on this. Stick with me. So um, they've got around 28% of people that are quitting smoking at the end of it. What, and I mean, they give you coupons for, um, I don't know if it's just like gum or patches or whatever, but they say nicotine replacement. They'll give you coupons for that that goes towards it. You have a 24-hour hotline that you can call for, an, uh, is it 24 hours? I may have given away too much. It may not be 24 hours. It's a hotline that you can call when you want a cigarette. Um, just sort of talk your way through stuff that way. So they give you plenty of support. And the people that are actually running it are ex-smokers as well. So you're not getting someone who's never done it before, who can't really quite relate to that um so anyway all the good stuff that goes in uh, hand in hand with that it's over 10 weeks they're trying to get this started in a few locations um starting in april 2016 their goal is that by 2018 all of their locations will be able to provide this which i think is pretty good so now for the cynical part of me <coughs> i didn't swallow anything all right i was gonna say i swallowed a bug but i'm not anyway um now, anytime I see something like this, I think, oh, that's a really good idea. And it's, you know, Canadian Cancer Society, uh, Canadian Cancer Society is on board, so that's good. Um, and yes, I think it's it's beneficial, obviously, to get things started that way. And, and just sort of making that connection in my head where doing the exercise that I'm doing now does help with the eating. I would imagine, you know, it's going to have the same effect on smoking. That, you know, when you really, really want a cigarette, you think, no, I've really, I've come really far. I haven't had a cigarette in a week. And I'm, you know, I'm doing two or three minutes at a time of running. My lung capacity has improved. A whole bunch of stuff has gone on. So I, I really kind of don't want to do that. I think it will help in the long run. I think it's something really good. But of course, the cynical part of me is thinking, oh, they're doing this for money. But 10 weeks for 70 bucks is pretty damn cheap. When you look at it, um, it's like a dollar a day, essentially, is what it is. And I mean, I used to smoke a lot. Um, and... I easily spent that much on cigarettes. So I don't know what the plan is if they get people to quit cold turkey. I highly doubt it. I think that they probably want you to wean yourself off as quickly as possible because, you know, you're going to be able to run a little bit more um, when you're not smoking as much. Um, but having been a smoker, I smoked uh, probably between three and four packs a day. Um, and in Canada, our packs are 25. So anywhere between 75 and 100 cigarettes a day. I was the kind of person that would light my next cigarette off the original one. Um, and on a 15-minute break, I could easily go through three of them. So that's how much I used to smoke. I did quit cold turkey. Um, but for me, whenever I was sick, I've told the story before, I think. But whenever I was sick, I never felt like having a cigarette. So if I got the flu or if I had a headache or, you know, sick to my stomach or whatever it was, I just, I did not want to smoke at all. I didn't want to be anywhere near it. I wanted fresh air in my face all the time. Sitting by a cold window was always awesome. Or, well, a window that's open. Um, having an open window in the wintertime when you're sick is great. It uh, helps so much. Anyway, um, so I had gotten really, really sick. I had, I, 
I assume it was some sort of flu bug. And it went on for almost two full weeks. It just could not get rid of it. Uh, probably because it didn't take a flu shot. Because <laughs> I didn't mention flu shots a while ago. Um, but at the end of that, I hadn't had a cigarette in a couple of weeks. And I really just got to a point when uh, it would be really, really stupid to start up again. Because although I kind of wanted one when I was sick, I didn't even have a craving. Like you think about it once in a while and then immediately you're like, no, I don't want one. So I knew I could go two weeks. So I just went, all right, I'm just going to go another two weeks. And at that point, I know I can go a month. I'm just going to go another month. And that sort of uh, led into the weight loss as well. When I started doing that, I just sort of kept that in mind, thinking, okay, you know what? I've done without nachos for a week. I know I can go a full week. I'm just going to go another week. And then I can go two weeks and then four weeks and eight weeks. So um, I'm not sure what their the program is specifically for weaning people off. Um, you can go up to their website, though, and take a look. And this is the only time I'm probably ever going to do this, um, unless I get a sponsor, which is never going to happen. But this is some free advertising for them. For the two of you that are watching this, um, if you are, and for however many of you are smokers, um, it's called Run to Quit is the name of the program. So they've sort of revamped a website called runtoquit.com. I'm going to put that in there. And again, I just, I think overall it's a really good idea. And part of it is because obviously, I mean, people that are, if you want to sort of get to a point where you're quitting smoking and you want to get healthier, then running is sort of a, even walking is just sort of a natural progression to that. So that, I mean, your lung capacity is really the main thing that you're trying to improve on. And where we're trying to lose weight and we're introducing exercise and everything else, I know it's a bit daunting to say, well, we're going to lose weight and start exercising and quit smoking all at once. So pace yourself, you know, find find your nice middle ground for whatever you're trying to do. But I think it's a good idea. I think it's something, you know, that would be beneficial, even if they're charging for it, which it's still dirt cheap, really, when you look at it. Um, and it's not even like they have $70. That's if you go to their location. You have your one-on-ones, you have your consultations, you have your coupons and everything else. Um, they have another one, which I think is $50. And basically, if you don't want to go in, you don't have to go in. You can do everything at home. They'll send you all the stuff. They go through emails. They go through instructions, everything else. Um, it's only in English, but it you save 20 bucks, and it's less than a dollar a day to do it. So for any of you that are out there that are looking at quitting smoking, that you've gotten sort of the food under control, and you think, eh, if I quit smoking, that will improve a little bit more. This might be something to look into. Now, there is that danger, of course, obviously, when you quit smoking, that you balloon up because you want to replace it with something. And I think this is a really, really good replacement, much better than food, because when I quit smoking, I did. I gained a lot of weight. I'm not going to say that all my weight came from there, but I was never as heavy as I was until after I quit smoking. Um, so... It does. It's one of those contributing factors. It's not the reason, it's not an excuse, but it's a factor in it. That when you quit smoking, you need something to do. There's, you know, there's that oral fixation that you've got to mm, alleviate? No. Satisfy? That might be better. Um, so obviously, you know, a lot of people go for food. It's very common knowledge that people tend to gain weight when they quit smoking. So I think if you're replacing it immediately, especially with something like this, with exercise, then it's going to be much, much better for you. And it's going to be a little bit easier because, again, these are people that understand what it's like to be a smoker. Um, the person who actually started the running room used to be a smoker as well. So I don't know if that's what got him into this when he first started doing this. Um, but I think it's a really good program. And you may not have it available where you are. Um, I think it's mainly just Canada. So for, if you're not Canadian, then this isn't going to be much good for you. But... The main reason why I sort of bring it up is because it's something that I never would have really thought of that if we're starting in on, you know, because we've really focused a lot on our issues, which are food and then the exercise, sort of a small part of that. Um, and I haven't really addressed anything about smoking or anything because it wasn't sort of, it wasn't part of what our plan was. And I'm sure that there are plenty of you out there that are watching this that are smokers and that are, have tried to quit time and time again. And if you don't feel like you're ready, then obviously, you know, you will quit when you're ready. Um, I mean, one thing at a time. If you focus on the smoking first and then the weight loss and then the exercise, or if you want to do the exercise first and then the smoking and then the weight loss, whatever it is that you're deciding to do. Um, but I think that they have this program in place so that, number one, you're not going to automatically replace your cigarettes with candy and cookies and everything else that we generally do. And two, just sort of, I mean, obviously getting customers in and things like that, but what a hell of an introduction this would be. 
um, to sort of start things off that way. And although, I mean, what we're doing, we have another nine or ten weeks left in what we're trying to do as well. Um, I would be curious to know exactly how they pace things out um, over those ten weeks. I assume it's going to be a little more accelerated than what we've been doing. Um, it's taken me almost four times as long just to get to a 5K, um, which I have adapted this week, which I'll talk about during the weekend. But um, I just think, in general, I think it's a really good program. It's, an, it's a good idea. And although the grumbly, you know, old man part of me wants to go, oh, they're doing it for customers to bring more people in. Um, it's a business. So, yes, of course, part of it is to, you know, we're going to introduce more people into this. But the fact that they're in doing this in conjunction with the Canadian Cancer Society and there's another group, but I can't remember what it is. Duh. Anyway, um, but I mean, if they've got a stamp of approval from the approval, approval, approval from them. Um, I mean, that goes a long way instead of them just saying, no, we're going to help you quit. They've already done the pilot project. They know that it works. Um, I'm sure. That, I mean, there are some people that go back to smoking after years. I, I actually personally know someone who had quit smoking for almost 10 years and then started up again, just pretty much overnight. Um, so however long people stay off it, um, it's probably going to fluctuate. But as of right now, they have a fairly good success rate. And 28% may not sound like a lot. But when you consider there's like 3 or 4% of people that try to quit cold turkey um, are successful, and maybe that's why they're comparing the two. Maybe they do get you to quit cold turkey, and then they try to replace it with the running. Um, I mean, you still get your nicotine patches or vaping or whatever it is that they decide to do. Um, but maybe that's why they're comparing the two of them. Maybe they're going to say, okay, the first thing, you need to quit cold turkey, and but this is going to replace that. So anyway. They have, uh, you know, people that they can talk to. They have, it seems like it's, everything is, you know, in a good spot. I think it's a good thing to start looking at. So I'm going to put a link in the description below so that in case any of you are curious, even if you don't smoke, even if you're not in Canada, just to go in, take a look, give me your opinion as well, see what you think. Um, I've gone through a little bit of it. Um, it seems like you're getting quite a bit for the $70. I don't know if you, if it's like a once every two week thing where you go in to talk to them. Um, but chances are, with um, from what I've seen, I'm assuming that they aren't going to say, well, you either have to have a treadmill on your own, or you've got to join this for a year, you've got to do this. It just seems like it is the $70 for the 10 weeks. So I think that's still pretty good, really. Even if you're not going in, it's like 50 bucks. So bravo to them. Bravo to the Canadian Cancer Society for sort of putting their oar in the water as well. To try to get people, to, well... They've done more than their share over the years. <laughs> they really have. This isn't like the first thing, like, you know, we should probably do something about cancer. Um, but I just think it's it was a neat little story. And I know it's not really related to what we're doing, aside from that psychological link when you're working really hard towards something, that if you are going to backslide, whether it's food for us or smoking for others, that, you know, because you put, you've invested so much energy into something else that's a benefit to you, that you don't want to look at it and go, uh, yeah, I'm going to start smoking again, or I'm going to eat that cake, or whatever it is, because you're thinking, no, I've you know I've worked hard to get where I am. I want to stay on track. And yes, you're going to have moments when you falter. You're going to have your cookies. You're going to have your cakes. You're going to have your cigarettes. But over the long term, I think that you know that replacement and being able to invest in something like that, and especially have the amount of support that it seems that they have um, throughout the program. Um, and I mean, you can take it over and over and over as well. It's not like a one-time thing, which kind of makes sense as well. But um, I think it will help quite a bit for people that are trying to quit smoking. But anyway, um, that was it. It was a neat little story, not quite related to what we're doing. But aside from that little tenuous thread that sort of connects that time investment thing. Um, but yeah, I'll put a link there. You can go and take a look and whatever. If you're in Canada, then there are different cities that it's actually going to be uh, put into play um, in April. It's not every city that's going to have it, but they figure within the next two years, they want to have every location um, of their franchise. Let's say their franchise. Um, every running room location is actually going to have um, this program in place. Um, overall, I think it's pretty good. But I'm repeating myself already. I can tell. I've said it five times. So I'm going to leave this video here. So thank you very much for watching. If you like it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.